This little computer here has so much potential, I can't even begin to list out what people have built with it. Of course, as you can see, I'm speaking about the single board computer that created its own industry, the Raspberry Pi. However, this little computer cannot do it all by itself. It's just the brains of the operation. This is where peripherals are very important. Speaking of peripherals, having a display has become crucial for me as I work on my projects, but at the same time is the crux of many Raspberry Pi projects. With that, I'd like to share with you my thoughts on a display I received from Andy Scene. The Wii Maxit Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen display monitor. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Forrest, and in today's episode, we're going to take a look at what you can do with the Wii Maxit 7-inch touchscreen display for the Raspberry Pi. First, I'd like to thank Andy Scene for sending over the Wii Maxit 7-inch touchscreen display to review. I received this monitor for free to share my complete, honest, and unbiased opinion based on my experience with it. With that, I hope you enjoy this video and find it useful. Next, let's do a quick rundown of the specs and ports. Starting with the screen, we have an anti-scratch, capacitive, five-point touchscreen with a 6H hardness, sporting a resolution of 1024 by 600, roughly a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and capable of HD at 1920x1080. It's a bright monitor at 400 nits of peak brightness and 178 degree IPS display for easy viewing at any angle. It includes two rear speakers and is USB powered. For the ports, it has two HDMI ports, two micro USB ports for power and for touch, one additional micro USB port for power only, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a paddle wheel for volume and brightness control. Using the monitor with any Raspberry Pi is very easy, given the accessories that it comes with. With it, we get a USB-A to micro USB adapter for the Raspberry Pi 4, 3, and 2, the HDMI-A to HDMI-A adapter for the Raspberry Pi 3 and 2, a micro HDMI-D to HDMI-A adapter for the Raspberry Pi 4, an HDMI-A cord, and a USB-A to micro USB cord for all your connectivity needs. In addition, it comes with all the hardware you need to mount the Raspberry Pi onto it, including four bronze mounts, four mounting screws, four rubber feet, a screwdriver, two stands, and two screws to secure them in place. Now, let's assemble the monitor. To begin, Instructions did not come with the kit. However, they are available on the Amazon listing, which you can find in the description below. First, screw in the four bronze mounts into the four mounting holes onto the back and middle of the monitor. Then, place the Pi on top of the four mounts. Then, insert mounting screws in the aligned holes on the Pi then tighten the screws to secure the Pi onto the mount. Next, insert the micro USB to USB-A adapter. Then, insert the HDMI-A to HDMI-D adapter, since I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4B. Just to note, when using Raspberry Pi OS on Raspberry Pi 4, we need to use a certified micro HDMI to HDMI cable, as the dongles did not work. Raspberry Pi OS is particular about using a certified HDMI cable. However, as you'll see, this dongle does work with OpenWRT, and it may work with other operating systems other than Raspberry Pi OS. Next, take the speakers, remove the adhesive tape on the back, then stick them onto the top left and right corners on the back of the monitor. I already did this, and I don't want to remove it and risk breaking the speakers. Next, take the attached wires and plug them in to the corresponding sized ports slightly below and to the side of the speakers. Then, take each stand. Line up each hole on the stand to the hole on the back and the bottom of the monitor. Insert each black screw and screw them into place.
At this point, you could stick the rubber feet onto the bottom of the stands, which I've already done. Lastly, connect the USB-C power cable to the Pi and power it on. With that, let's get into my three use cases for this monitor. I've never had a small display for my Raspberry Pi projects, but now that I have this, it's become a useful tool for me as I build out different projects and provision my Raspberry Pi. For one, it has reduced my reliance on my HDMI monitor that is already being used by another computer. Constantly having to switch my HDMI monitor from my computer to my Raspberry Pi is a burden on my workflow. With this monitor, it doesn't need a separate power adapter when using it with the Raspberry Pi. It's effectively plug and play. My primary use case for this monitor is as a debug monitor for OpenWRT. Using a custom built firmware image with the ability to increase the font, I can comfortably view the terminal, change configuration, view logs, and execute commands as needed, especially when I've locked myself out of the Lucy interface. It has happened all too often as I make network changes. So using this monitor allows me to maintain focus while I test changes in OpenWRT. For this video, I learned how to build my own OpenWRT image. So if you want to learn how to make your own custom firmware image of OpenWRT, get subscribed below. My secondary use case is as a touchscreen Raspberry Pi desktop or other OS for Raspberry Pi with a GUI. With the touchscreen, I use it as a standalone Raspberry Pi desktop running Bullseye without a mouse or a keyboard. After decreasing the resolution and increasing the window size, it makes the monitor easy enough to use with a touchscreen keyboard. The best and most reliable on-screen keyboard I used in my testing was Onboard. I was able to easily type on it and move the keyboard out of the way with my finger. During my testing, the touchscreen did give out occasionally, but that could be a software issue and it came back up promptly. Speakers worked very well after I remembered to change the audio output to HDMI. It's not the best speaker as expected at this price point, but it's pretty good if you ask me. Take a listen for yourself. Changing the volume and the brightness are simple with the paddle wheel on the side, pushing up or down to increase or decrease the volume, and pushing in on the paddle wheel to change the brightness mode, and pushing up or down as well to increase or decrease the brightness. My last use case is as an external laptop monitor. Before I dive into my thoughts, I have to say it does not function as a touchscreen external monitor when hooked up to another computer, at least for Mac OS. I expected this, as macOS likely doesn't have the proper touchscreen drivers. However, this isn't to say it won't work with other operating systems. Just for macOS Monterey, it doesn't. Continuing on, this monitor is very useful for when I need a display on the go that I can power from a USB port on my laptop. It functions and responds well as an external display, and the speakers also work when used as an external display. Not that you'd use them, but it does work. It functions great as a side multimedia monitor for listening to music or watching videos, a convenient reference monitor for reading and editing text, and even a virtual terminal monitor, just like in my first use case. It's perfect to get those types of apps off your main display where your focus is and onto the side monitor. The monitor defaults to 1024 by 600, which honestly I think looks best. At 1920 by 1080, everything on the display becomes too small to be legible so it's somewhat useless at this resolution, but it's nice to know that you can get up to 1920 by 1080 on this monitor with other resolutions in between. These use cases above are just what I've encountered so far, but there are so many other ways you can use this monitor, such as a home automation console, a point of sale terminal, an indoor air quality monitor, and even a mobile RetroPie gaming monitor. So if I ever decide to engage in these projects, I know I'll have the right monitor for the job. Overall, with everything that comes with this monitor, its use cases, and its price point at $75, I think it's a great purchase that will suit your needs for many projects for years to come. Check out the links in the description to get one for yourself. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. Would you get your own mini monitor for a Raspberry Pi? If so, what would you do with it? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks again, 
and I'll see you in the next video.